I've had a few questions about how to measure extremes using NX, and uh, so I thought I'd show you some basic examples here. As we go into the measure command, the fundamental one thing we need to do is uh, turn on the extreme results down here, the extreme uh, filter, the result filter, right? Um, this is a, a less trafficked command, less common, and so this is usually off by default, right? If we turn that on, the other thing we'll want to check on here is just to make sure that in our measurements here, uh, if we go to that extreme tab, that yeah, extreme point is turned on. This should be turned on by default. There are some other extreme measurements in here too that are off by default, but that one should be on, right? So we've got extreme point turned on, we've got the extreme results turned on here. And at, at that point, we should be able to just start selecting an object. And, and then as we go to select a vector, we can either switch over there or use the accelerators. I like to use the the, the one, two, three keys on the on the keyboard here to switch between those types very quickly. But if we select that curve and then select, say, this vector, we'll very quickly get this extreme point uh, as a result, right? Now we're seeing this angle here as well. We don't really need to see that angle in this case. So we may hide that one. In fact, I'm gonna hide these just for fun. Um, but this will give us that extreme point there at the top, right? So if we square this up and look at this for just a minute, we chose again the up vector here, the Z vector here. And so we're getting that point. But if we chose a different vector, we would get a different extreme point here, right? If we chose, for instance, the positive X direction here, we're gonna see that that extreme point in the X direction is out this way, right? Again, I've selected the vector here. I can reselect now uh, that, that vector if I want to, right? If we go negative X, of course, it'll go to the other end down there, right? If we select negative Z, I'm not sure actually where the lowest point is. I guess it's that end. <laughs> so that's the low point there, right? But again, if we're looking for the peak, that positive Z there will give us the uh, the, the peak in Z. Okay, so that's, that's that guy. We can save that as an expression if we want to, right? We can also create geometry out there if we want to. If we're saving the expression, this will create associative geometry. If we're not saving the expression here, this will create non-associative geometry. We can do that either way. We'll, we'll save it associatively here. And uh, and that'll create then, of course, a, a measure uh, extreme point feature uh, in our tree there, right? That we can see and, and uh, edit and, and update and, and so forth. Um, let's look at the surface here, for instance. We can do a similar thing here and grab, for instance, that surface as the object. And then with vectors, if we pick, say, this direction, this will start to tell us that there are multiple extreme point solutions available actually down here. Um, this, there's not one point along that edge that's uniquely farther away than the others, right? And so it wants an additional direction vector to help reduce the, sol the solution set there. So we can grab, say, that direction. It'll grab then the, the point at the farthest end of that. It calculates those in sequence, right? It'll, it'll get all those points first. And then as we, as we do this direction, it, it's using that original solution and, and selecting within that original solution to come up with this answer. Um, here again, let's save that one uh, just because we can. And then let's do one more down here with a solid like this. You can do a similar kind of thing, right? So if we select uh, this one, I don't actually want that face. I actually want to grab this body here instead. Let's grab that. There we go. And then we'll grab uh, for the vector here. Similarly, if we pick this direction, we'll grab all the points on that end. Again, it wants some more direction there, so we can we can pick an additional vector that gets us now to, to this edge, really, over here, right? Uh, any point along that edge. And then with uh, a third vector up here, for instance, we'll get to that unique uh, top corner of the part. So that's that's a, a quick 3D example, right? So again, the, the minimum number of vectors really can vary based on the geometry, what's going on there. Um, with this uh, surface in the middle here, this actually has a little bit of a crown in the middle of it. So for instance, if we were to come and grab that surface and uh, the up vector, that's going to uniquely find actually a, a high point uh, on that surface because again, there's just a little bit of crown in this in this direction to it here. It's not uh, it's not actually straight. So one vector is sufficient in that case where there actually is a unique point on the top, right? Um, on this one here, this, this entire edge had an equal uh, value in Z, and, or sorry, in X. And so we, we needed an additional director to, to, a direction to pick one end or the other of that one. Okay. 
So, uh, I think that is all on that one. <laughs> Hope you find that useful.